Ladies and gentlemen, you've heard their point. Now, hear the counterpoint on Libertarian Counterpoint Podcasts. Thank you for tuning in. I'm your host, James Just, and with me today is Gia Christopher. She is, you're, you, what are you at there in Placer County now, Gia? I forget. I'm the, I'm the chairwoman of the county for the Libertarian Party of California. That's right. I, I didn't want to label you wrong. So, And Tanya is a medical freedom warrior, as from I like to call her. Tanya, so how are you doing today? I'm great. Last name Collins. Sorry. <laughs> Tanya Collins, Tanya Collins. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm reading it off the no, screen. It's my own. I know your name. We've been on the show before. <laughs> I know. I know. I'm great. I'm doing well. How are you both doing? Oh, we're doing well. We're doing well. I'm glad to have you guys on. I saw you at the, your uh, protest out in, it was Roseville, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I saw you guys out in the pro- Roseville. So I wanted to get a chance to talk to you and let you guys kind of tell everybody why, you're, why you were out there. There's a lot of misinformation on why protesters are out these days and so i wanted to let you guys get a chance to to give your first hand account and your first hand you know your reasons for doing it so i actually i i don't even know if i would call it a protest um a protest um i would say that we were exercising our first amendment rights and really just spreading encouragement and positivity to people that it's okay to come out um it's okay to go back to work um i wouldn't say that it was a, a protest i I would um, I would say it was more of an exercise. And Tanya came out um, and got some friends, and um, people started joining. And it was ninety nine percent positive. Honks, cheers, high fives, um, thumbs up. Ninety nine percent positive. Honks, honks, honks. Got a lot of those. Um, it was great. It was. Uh, I, I wasn't even planning on going. Gia had sent me the link and everything. And uh, with my workload right now, it, to do anything is just exhausting. Anything additional is exhausting. And to stand there with a sign, you know, in the health freedom movement, I did that all last year and I'm just so exhausted from it. But um, Gia, she, this was her coming out. You know, she was locked in her house. For 34 days, right? 34? It's been 39 days today. 39 days. We and started so, our we started ours before the mandate because we didn't right. trust the government to tell us what was going on. Right. You missed my husband's birthday. I know. <laughs> I, I'm still sad about that. That's okay. But so, you know, it was Gia really wanted me there. And I was like, you know, I just have to suck it up and I'm gonna go because this is it was very important for me. It was very important for her. It's very important for a lot of people that need to get back to work. It's a lot of, it's important for a lot of people. Their livelihoods are, you know, um, their livelihoods are at stake and I am in to support it. Right now, I'm not affected by it personally. Um, in fact, I'm like triple busy with work, but eventually when people start to lose their jobs, like they are now, my business and my husband's business will be gone. We no more homes will be sold, no more refis, and we won't have a job. So of course I'm going to try to nip it in the butt first, you know, get there first and protest my, you know, it, you know, it's my it's my right to do so, to protest. Yeah, and I think we all have our roles to play. You know, I think as a kind of a politician and TV show host. You know, maybe going down to the protest and holding signs is, is not my role. Maybe my role is to make sure you guys had a chance to get here and get your voice out and make sure you be heard. And as a politician, my, my role is maybe to stand in the middle and say, look, I can understand both of you. And so we have to get together. We have to actually start having a better conversation because you guys right now, we're not talking to each other. And that's why we're so divided. And so, yeah. you know, I think it's really important that as we listen and we watch the news media and our and the political classes, there are sitting out there dividing us. And so I think it's important that we actually get together and say, no, we're not, we're not here to scare anybody. We don't want anybody to get sick. If you, if you're afraid, stay home, but, but there's a danger to close. You're immune immune compromised. If you have any, you know, preexisting conditions, or if you're afraid of any sort, just stay home, but don't punish the rest of the nation over those individuals that, you know, can handle it themselves. They could be adults 
and handle, take care of themselves, just like we can, does the whole country doesn't need to be shut down over it. Knowledge yeah, is power. Right. And if you don't have correct information, how can you make an informed decision? Mm -hmm. And so as a person who is immunocompromised, I didn't trust back in early March. I didn't trust the government to protect me. You can't. You can't right. live your life that way because um, just like I didn't trust the government to protect me then, I don't trust the government to protect me now. It's no different. It's the same. I feel like now I have more information to make a, a decision that the virus is not likely to um, cause as much health devastation as it will uh, economic devastation. People are right. losing their lives to suicide. Right. Um, people are losing their mental health. They're losing their personal yeah. connections. Isolation is hurting people yes. so bad. And if we can't address and advocate for those people, then um, what are we doing? It's actually worse than that. A UN report was issued uh, late last week and the economic disruption caused by the lockdowns, they said, well, push 200,000 children across the world into death and millions more into extreme poverty. And yeah. these are kids right. who we've just gotten out of extreme poverty. We've right. just solved well, all this There's problem kids that are in homes that are very abusive. So they're home with their abusive parents all day. Yeah. Um, you know, domestic violence has skyrocketed. Police yeah. are police are getting calls for domestic violence issues. Um, this is a huge impact for a lot of things. You know, a lot of people, and it's it's devastating. It's very devastating. And then we're not getting clear information from number one, our government, and number two, the media. The media loves to spin it. And by the way, James, thank you so much for having us on. We we appreciate it. Uh, but, um, you know, the media just loves to spin it however they want to spin it. And it seems like every day it's something new. And it's this meaning, hey, well, we're going to keep you guys on lockdown until there's a vaccine. That's it. And wait a second. If you think about it, the virus itself, it takes about 10 days to fully recover from. Right. If you get it. Some people have symptoms, some people don't. The people that have uh, immune compromised systems should take it easy, you know, vitamin C, extra vitamin C, all that good stuff. But um, but then they're they're like, hold on a second, we're gonna shut you down. You're, it's been a month now and we're gonna continue to sh keep it shut for months longer. And that's a problem because even if you have it, it's a 10 day recovery period. So we should already be done, right? Well, so they moved the goalpost. They shut us down right. initially to not overwhelm the hospitals. The hospitals, yeah. And if you check the CDC website, and I'll share all of that with you, you can look at the CDC's own data that they used in order to figure out how many hospital beds, ventilators, and other resources that they were going to need on the worst. And they shouldn't scenario. be using ventilators for this. Well, well, let me tell you something. Seven days has gone by since the peak of this um, yes. worst case scenario. And we had, in the state of California, 20 times the surplus necessary to get through our worst case scenario. So if the point of the lockdown was not to impact the hospitals and overwhelm the hospitals, we did it. Right. We right. did it. The, the hospitals, it's a ghost town. Yes. It's a ghost town in these hospitals. Where's the, where's the parade that said, hey, guys, you did it. You isolated. We didn't impact the hospitals. And now we can get back to living our normal lives. Exactly. Maybe do that. Maybe do the self isolate wash your damn hands. I mean, did right. it really take all this to right. discover the benefits of hand washing? What's crazy to me is the I just, Yeah, the, and what's crazy to me is the government and, and media is all, they're always pushing the most unhealthy way of handling a virus, always. I, I'm actually surprised that they say wash your hands because at the beginning they would never have said wash your hands. You know what I mean? It's wash your hands vitamin C, vitamin D, and they're closing down parks and beaches. And so you can't really get your vitamin D, you know, or zinc, definitely right. zinc. And or oxygen. The, it, yeah, it, not I was in the grocery store. Oxygen. Yeah, if you're in the grocery store, they now make them wear gloves in the grocery store, right? But they well, wear the same pair of gloves for every customer. Now, I'm an ex-janitor. Right. I, right. I know why you wear gloves under what circumstances. 
there, that's right. kind of glove wearing is to protect your skin from absorptions from chemical burns and for that kind of thing it's not to protect yourself from from kind of germ contact you have to change your gloves after every single operation right. when you do that. that does not happen yeah no they use the same pair of gloves they're even using yep. the wrong kind of gloves they're using mm -hmm. the gloves that janitors wear to protect their hands from from chemical right. burns and chemical exposures and that kind of thing they're not using the kind of disposable gloves, the quick disposable gloves that you should be using under that circuit. They and would right, literally be better off sanitizing their hands real quick every 10 minutes. They'd be right. literally doing more than they're doing now. 100%, right. but this is not about the virus. This is about the illusion of protection. Yes, it's it's right. it's like security theater at the airports. You know, like when they take pay, uh, fingernail clippers at your airports. It's, it's theater. theater. It's theater. It's absolutely theater. Um, when you wear the mask, but your nose is exposed because right. Well, that's and so why are you even wearing the mask? What are you, mm -hmm. what are you doing? Yeah. The mask. And is masks the masks are wearing. healthy as it is. I mean, sitting there all day, you're breathing in your own carbon dioxide, mm -hmm. yeah. and and you're not getting free flow of oxygen. Mm -hmm. I, that that's just yeah. insanity. Yeah. You need oxygen. It's a respiratory illness. You need oxygen. But what? Okay, you have to think about it. They shut us down. What next are they going to come up with to shut oh. us down again? This can go over and it can continue. Yes, there's always something, years. which brings us to this medical issues. They're talking about how we're going to get out of this, how they're going to re re release the lockdown, right? But they're talking about a lot of testing and a lot of tracing, which means mandatory medical testing for everybody. Is our, is, you know, I thought we used to have medical right. privacy rights, right? Sure, like, sure. Yeah. yeah. It, the, this medical privacy and our privacy and our medical decisions and the fact that, you know, no one, no one but us and our doctors are supposed to have access to our medical records. I suppose right. that is just now completely gone. All well, remember when they passed um, the law for my daughter's medical exemption, they, they want to see everything in her file, basically. And I'm like, mm, no, that's not your business. Like, yeah, we well, kind of I mean, saw this one coming, didn't we? When all yeah. this whole mandatory vaccinations things, the kind of the steps oh, were lined up. That's the big key. They're keeping us locked up for that. And people are like, oh, lining up. Oh, sure. It hasn't been tested. Well, you know, what's funny is they're testing the vaccine and they're te the placebo that they're using is a, the meningitis vaccine. Or vitamin C. Yeah. They're not even using a true placebo. That's yeah. true. And they're and they're they're saying they're they have even admitted that they are not using a placebo. Yeah. How is that? I know. I have How documentation that on my Facebook. Yeah, it's that's sad. It's shameful. And and what and we can do better. We can do better. I mean, if yeah. they're, you know, and what what scares me the most are these people that line up for this stuff without it being tested. Even long term studies. There's no not long term studies on these things. And you're sitting there going, wait, you could get cancer down the road. You can get arthritis down the road. You could get, you know, all these things, diabetes. But but no, it's OK, because this is an instant fix for the coronavirus. You know, that's no. Yeah. That's my son was part of a vaccine test for uh, ear infections because my, all my kids had a, had a lot of ear infection issues. And so my son was part of a vaccine trial for that because even though that's the same child who had had a vaccine reaction earlier, he was in the hospital when he was a baby as a vaccine reaction, but we had figured that it was the multiple vaccines, not the one. That's kind of how we had kind of come to this conclusion. So we said, okay, for our conditions, it seems like not a reasonable, unreasonable thing to do to, to give him this vaccine for the ear infection and to see if it works. And for him, it worked. He never had an ear infection his entire life. And when all of our other kids had had a lot of them. So, so I'm well, not against crazy. vaccine at all, but we made the choice, right? But well, we have to make that choice. Yeah, on the vaccine manufacturer's inserts, it says ear infections as an adverse reaction. So it's kind of funny, and they kind of do that with a lot of things. They'll have an adverse reaction on something, and then they'll be like, oh, well, we just need to create another vaccine for that adverse reaction. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, but the fact, the, what, 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 what got me scared on how these do these vaccine safety tests is you stop the test at about two thirds of the way through because it was going so well, they just stopped the test. I says, well, you don't stop the test if it's going well, you finish it, you designed it with a purpose and you're supposed to finish it. And so that's when right. I realized they're no longer doing safety tests properly. Right, right. And, and that scared the living crap out of me because if you're not doing safety tests properly for vaccines, then there's gotta be, then there's something seriously wrong. 
Right. And so I'm, I'm all for people getting the choice, having the choice to make vaccines. I think in most people, people's cases, probably smart, but I just sure in the hell ain't going to tell anybody they have to do it. And I will fight anybody who says they should. <laughs> right. right. And that's the thing. If you're making it mandatory, that's when you're stepping on people's rights. Yes. You know, um, you know, don't be stepping on my rights. Uh, yeah, you I, don't have, you know, back to the process. We don't have right. a right to control other people's body, right? That's right. the whole point. Other people have basic human freedoms to move, to earn a living, you know, to control what goes inside their body those or are, doesn't. You in basic, th those are basic human rights. That's absolutely true. And they, they're gone. They're gone. And when this thing happened no, and we saw them. China get locked down, we're and you're like, wow, that's, that's crazy that they are getting locked down and, and um, quarantining healthy people. And my son said something like, mom, is that going to happen to us? And I said, no, because we're Americans. Wow. Yeah, well, yeah. I can tell you how it happened. I was watching this guy, a uh, uh, YouTuber yesterday, and he's one of those guys who's a social justice warrior, you know, case of police. And then all of a sudden now he's a blue boot looker. Literally, he's, he can't believe that people are out protesting and the police should go off and do something. You go, wait a minute. You were just telling us just, you know, literally two months ago about how you didn't trust the establishment. You don't trust the government. You don't trust the police. And now you're begging for them to save you. It's just <laughs> it's right. the very same people. It's like, it's like you guys have, don't have. I can get it. You want to ask people to stay home, but you right. ask them to stay home. Well, that's so funny. There's so many people in the health freedom movement that I'm in. And they're like, just stay home, just stay home. So it will, you know, be contained and, and just stay home. They're going to make it, it's going to make it worse if you're out there. And I'm like, you're in a health freedom movement to where they're taking away your freedoms and you're, you're just bending over and being like, sorry, I didn't mean to say that, but you're just like laying there and be like, oh yeah, just walk all over me. You know, here are my freedoms. I'm just going to hand them over to you. It's, yeah. so, it's so hard not to be scared, especially when you don't have the proper information or, and you know that the data you're getting is inaccurate and conflicting. So then you spiral into anxiety and you're anxious and you're stressed out and you're scared and scared people react this way. This right. is, um, this is the mass. Well, the media is, the mask has nothing to do with the spread of transmission, and everybody will admit it that it's the same mask that they've been wearing for days. The mask is just a symbol that you're complying. Right. Right. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Oh, and 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 paranoid. They're absolutely paranoid. And they are. They are scared. I mean, get that. I mean, get scared. I'm scared too. I'm scared. Yeah. This is unprecedented times. And I think the that's. Kind of think we're all scared. Going we're to scared be bad of losing. No matter what. Yeah, we're scared of our health. We're scared of losing our health, and we're scared of losing our freedoms. And where do we balance that? I think is kind of the question: is how do we balance? I think I must be like the odd one out. I'm the odd one out because I'm I'm not afraid of this virus, which is so weird. I know it's a weird thing, but I'm not. I know no, how to I'm take care anymore. of myself. I know how to take care I'm of my family. Anymore. Yeah, and I, and I'm right. not anymore. Right, because, because well, if you, I'm going to live every single on? day of my life in fear and hide then what's the point of living? Right, right. We know we have not. Honestly, you you die a car virus. Virus. This you die, oh. you know, doing other things. But I, the reason why I'm not scared is because I know how to take care of myself and my family with vitamins and eating right. And, you know, things of that nature, all natural. Like for centuries, we use natural remedies. Why, so, why, you know, why does everything have to be pushed on, you know, pharmaceutically? Like everything is pushed on us. And I, I just, I don't agree with it. Well, it doesn't um, make sense to get a vaccine for a virus that you don't understand. Right. And you're injecting that same virus into yourself. And so like, you can get it and spread it to others. We and don't understand if the virus, virus vaccine, vaccine, it will shed. So you will shed it to others. Yes. So. Yes. Yeah, and these are the full conversations that, that we don't actually get to have very often, right? There's the media, yeah. the media has their one side of the conversation, and oh, that's all they get. Through. And so that's kind of why it's important that we get to come out here and do these kinds of things and kind of try and get our voices heard. The argument is that you should trust doctors. Trust doctors. We should not open up the economy. You have to trust doctors and trust scientists. Wrong. Well, and what's funny is the third leading cause of death is medical errors. Well, 
That's and exactly the point. Scientists don't trust scientists. They are constantly proving and disproving each other's work. Yeah. You don't yep. trust science. You right. prove science. Right. Well, and people look at I, science as religion. They really yeah. do. Yes. It's it's treated as a religion where you can't challenge it because right. then you are being um, um, the heretic. Yes. 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 The blasphemer. Blasphemer. Shun the blasphemer. Shun the blasphemer. How dare you not trust the scientists <laughs> that I saw on TV? Well, these scientists are saying this, so it must be true. Well, right. there and are just like Dr. Who are Dr. Bossy, you know, in back of Trump. That guy has lied under oath multiple times, and he's the one that is giving Trump advice, and Trump is, it, it, it's just, there's a little. Uh, There's something so really there. suspicious. Back in 2016 or 2017, there's a video. I'll share it with you. Dr. Fauci said that this administration is going to have a surprise pandemic that it's not going to be able to handle. Wait, how did you predict a surprise pandemic? It was Gates and his prediction. Oh, and his pandemic show coming out on Netflix right before all everything breaks loose. I mean, well, that. That's a There's little always confusing. a pandemic. There's quite literally a pandemic every other year. Right. It's quite well, literally every other year. Happen. It's just a matter of if we want to get scared about this one or not. We have yeah, a flu vaccine and we still have people dying of the flu. Every season, you have to get a new vaccine for a flu. And they admit the flu shot may not work. No. And in fact, sometimes it's even like 7%. But they're saying, oh, we'll get it anyways. But yeah, twenty percent is good. Twenty 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 five percent effective rate is good for a flu vaccine. That's what they consider they, a successful. They don't pay a penalty for being wrong. No one pays a penalty for being wrong on the vaccine. So if you get the flu shot and you get the flu, they go, "Oh, well, you didn't get the right flu shot." Right. So it's not their fault. It's your or fault. You got a different strain of the flu, or you didn't get you it in time, or or well, it, you know, you could get it, but you don't get it as bad. Yeah, that's, that's the new one. Who does a vaccine make you not get it as bad? I don't know. I it never. Is bad. <laughs> okay, you got flu like It even says on the va the manufacturer's package insert, you can get flu like symptoms, but you just can't get the flu with the flu shot. Okay, I mean, <laughs> you know, you can still get the flu with the flu shot. But if you get the flu and you had a flu shot, you got the wrong flu shot. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And no one pays a penalty. No one pays a penalty for being wrong. Right. Where in well, any other you, business, if you, if you are wrong flu. that bad. Right. And then bringing yeah. up the flu, according to the CDC, what, last year, the, the year before, or like seven, or, uh, 2017, what, we had eight, 80,000 deaths from the flu. They didn't close the country down over that. No. My 22-year-old niece died of pneumonia in 2016. And the airport didn't get shut down. Um, it didn't make the news. You would think that a young, healthy, vibrant young woman dying of pneumonia at 22 would be alarming. If right. that, if if this were a statistic today and she died, it would it would be headline news and everybody would be, oh my gosh, it's coming for young people. Here's right. this poster child for, and they would have used her to spread their message. Oh, completely. Uh, but when it, just when like there, it was the when measles. there was no agenda, nobody cared. It Last was just year, oh, that yeah. all of a sudden measles disappeared. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's it's always something. That, it, My that, it, they want you to hear it. Yeah, spinning. They want to have, and My it looks like spinning for it. Facebook's having some uh, technical issues, so it's probably a good time for us to kind of end it there as the okay. stream's starting to break up. But I want to thank you, ladies, for showing up. I greatly appreciate it. And when we get back in the studio, I'm going to have to have you guys on so we can come out and have a better discussion about this where, where we can have thank a real you. one in the real studio. Thank I you appreciate so you much, coming. James. All right. Thanks, you guys. And appreciate thank you for coming it. out with me, Tanya. What was thank that? You, yeah. I love you guys. Oh, so thank you for coming. I love you. Bye. I love you guys. All right. Bye. We'll talk to you guys later. And for okay, all of bye. you out there, please remember to love everybody. And check, go to libertariancampoint.com and follow us all on our fish, social media things. And as always, love everybody and good night. Hear the counterpoint on Libertarian Counterpoint Podcasts.